The invitation had a gold edge on pink paper. The lettering was black. The words went, You are cordially invited to an unveiling of George's fashions for the future. Then it gave the date and the street address. George was one of the bigwigs in the women's fashion game. If he had a surname, he discouraged the use of it. Just plain old George with a French accent, thank you. I had no idea why George sent me an invitation, but as I had the time on my hands, I went along. I was early. So were the 50 or so people in the display room. Most of them were old ducks, and some had their husbands along. One of the husbands, a little Casper milk toast of a man, came over to me with two drinks in his hand. Have one? Oh, uh, thanks. Triple scotch. <laughs> uh, who are you trying to forget? Uh, not who, not who. All this. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, don't you like fashion shows, huh? Hate them. My wife drags me along. That's her over there with the peacock feathers in her hat. Oh. Yes. I feel the same way. Well... <laughs> Won't your wife miss you? Only when she wants me to use the checkbook. I'm very good at signing checks. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. And welcome to the unveiling of my fashions for the future. I, of course, am George. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now for the business at hand. Music, maestro. Well, what a smart boy, huh? He's even setting a mood. Very expensive music, that. Everything is expensive. If George smiles at you, it's time to reach for the checkbook. Now, my dear friends, we are ready for the big moment. First, my creation for evening wear. I have called this creation Blue of Dawn. Here we are. Oh, lovely. And so it went on. Evening gowns, suits. Ah. Oh. Lingerie, negligees. Have a look at that. Mm-hmm. Nice, isn't she? I said, well, she... She winked at you. Yeah. Yeah, a friend of mine. I had no idea she'd be modeling here today. What's her name? Uh, if I'm not being too bold. Marla Newton. Very nice. Charming. Such beautiful uh, eyes. We were standing near the platform at the extreme end. Marla came along the platform. Larry. Why, she, she's talking to you. Yeah. What is it, Marna? See you after the fashion show? Sure. Coffee shop next door. Mm -hmm. I want to have a talk with you. Right. Well, I wouldn't mind going to fashion shows if that's what happened to me. Look, uh, I think your wife is signaling for you. Oh, dear. She probably wants to buy the negligee your friend is modeling. I, I'm sure they won't have it in my wife's size. <laughs> I was sitting at a rear table in the coffee joint. There were about six other guys, all escorted. They forgot about their escorts when Mana walked in. She was wearing a tangerine wool dress. <laughs> ah, those lucky sheep. Hello, Larry. I was so glad to see you there. Ditto. Coffee? Thank you. Another coffee, please. Well, what is it you want to see me about, Mana? A body. You said body, didn't you? Yes. In my, uh, in my living room. That's a fine place to keep a body. That's just it, Larry. Uh -huh. You mean you want me to get rid of it? Yes. And that was why you were so glad to see me, huh? Yes. Marner, I'm a private eye. I don't think you understand. I didn't kill Ed. Oh, you're pretty familiar with the corpse. His name is Ed oh, yeah. Murphy. He was a friend of mine. Seems to me I've heard that name. He was well known around the nightclubs. Played polo, 
Drove a racing car. Yeah. Yeah, I remember now. You got any idea of why he should be dead in your living room? No. But he had a habit of just dropping in on people. He had a set of skeleton keys. He'd just open the door and go in. It's odd. He lived this long. How was he killed? Knife, I think. From the way his clothes are torn. Larry, I didn't kill him. I didn't say you did. Come on. We'll skip the coffee. Have a drink at your place. Marna was a model in the upper brackets, and her Potts Point apartment looked like it. Everything was expensive. Everything was just right. Except, of course, the, uh, the guy on the rug. He'd been stabbed all right, at least a dozen times. Look, I didn't see that when I came in. The knife, half under the lounge. Mm, kitchen knife. Yours? Yes. Don't touch it. Don't worry, I won't. Oh, I'm scared, Larry. So scared. Hey. Hold on to me. Why, sure. Oh, if you hadn't been at the fashion show, I don't know what I'd have done. When did you find him? Just before the fashion show. I'd been out all morning getting fitted for the show. Why didn't you go to the cops? I was too frightened. You see, Ed and I were once very friendly. We broke up after quite an argument. Of all places, we had the argument at a nightclub. How long were you there getting fitted? From nine till about half past one. Mm, it's now four. Why should it matter what time it is? Because from the feel of this guy's hand and because of other things, I'd say he'd been dead for about six hours. Can you prove you were at the fashion show all morning? Oh, yes. Then you've got nothing to worry about. You're in the clear. We might as well get the cuffs. No, Larry. Why not? Larry, I'm a well-known fashion model. If this got out, my career would be finished. People in the business are very conservative. Well, it's a bad break, Marta, but there's nothing we can do about it. It'd mean starting all over again in some other business. I, I just couldn't face that, Larry. Sorry, I'm going to use the phone. Put it down, Larry. Uh-uh, it's got to be this way. Oh, just put it down for a moment. Please. Please. Well, make it fast. If you help me, Larry, I'll do anything. Don't worry, I'll help you after I get the cops. I didn't mean that kind of help. Oh? What kind do you mean? Get rid of the body for me. Uh-uh. I don't think you quite understand. You see, I... I'm a very appreciative sort of girl. Are you? Mm-hmm. Very. You're, uh, wrinkling my tie. Mary. Oh, what's a wrinkled tie? Come here. <laughs> yeah. Now do you understand? Mm, you're quite a girl. I'll confess something. Yeah? During all the time I've known you. Oh, I've wanted you to do that. Uh, maybe you should have cooperated earlier. Well, we're cooperating now, aren't we? Speaking of cooperation. Larry. Sorry, honey, there's a right way. Stop it. Sure. I didn't want to do it this way. Well, as I said before, you're quite a girl. A kiss one minute, a gun the next. I don't want to use it. Put your hands on top of your head. Why? So I can take your gun. Which was what she did. Keeping the muzzle of her fancy 25 against my back. A 25 slug is pretty small, but that doesn't make it any less deadlier than another slug when it hits you in the right place. You're going to help me get rid of the body, Larry. Am I? You're going to carry him out the back way to my car. Then we're going for a drive. I got the body to the car without anybody seeing me. Dumped it in the back. I drove. Marna sat in front with me, keeping the gun trained on the knot in my tie. We got rid of the body in French's forest. Went back to the car, drove back towards the city. Where to, honey? Your place. 
You can give me a drink. Well, that was what happened. She even poured the drinks herself, keeping her gun on me all the while. She took her drink, backed away. I took mine. I was out of scotch, so it was neat Irish whiskey. Here's luck, Larry. You're going to need it. Not thinking of turning me in, are you? <clears throat> if I said I was going to turn you into the boys in blue, would you shoot me? I'd very much dislike to. Oh, a record player. Mm -hmm. mm. Loaded, too. Mind if I turn it on? Go right ahead. Thank you. I'll just sit down and look at you. Hmm. Nice nylons. Just think of all the good times we could have had. But not now, huh? Well, you're going to be very angry with me. I don't get you. I don't get you one bit. <laughs> I've got you wondering, haven't I? Yeah. Are you just having fun waiting to put a slug in me? Larry. I wouldn't dream of doing anything like that. Mm-hmm. Well, what comes next? What do you mean? Well, you're not just going to sit there all night looking at me. Why not? You know you have an interesting face. Far from perfect, of course. Scar here and there. A rugged, tough face. Yeah. I... Uh, 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 What's the matter, Larry? My head was pounding. I looked at her. She was smiling. Then her face blurred. Headache, Larry. I... Uh, uh, Perhaps it was the Irish whiskey. Whis whiskey? You didn't see me put the drops in it, did you? Poison. Huh? Don't try to I... get up. You're helpless. <clears throat> see? You can't even move your arm. Are you... <laughs> you... <laughs> I was just about out. She got to her feet. But to me, she was a blur of movement. She went to the phone. Then I couldn't see anymore. The last thing I heard was... at my skull. I was on the couch. I pushed myself up, staggered, <coughs> grabbed the table, went over. <sighs> I lay on the floor, cheek pressed against the carpet. And then suddenly it hit me. Couldn't have been poison in the whiskey. Finally, I crawled to the bathroom on my hands and knees turned on the shower, crawled into the shower cubicle, clothes and all. The cold needles of water stabbed life into me. Peeled off my clothes. Got to my feet. Stayed under the shower for at least five minutes. Then I shaved, dressed, and went to the nearest saloon where I had a couple of beef teas laced with double brandies. After that, police headquarters and Inspector Daniels. You don't look so good, Kent. I don't feel so good. Too bad. Oh, this is a great place to come for sympathy. What's on your mind? Murder. If you've come here with another one of your theories... It's I... not about one of the 50-odd unsolved murders on your books. As a matter of fact, this one isn't even on the books. Come on, out with it. 
I've, uh, I've got word that a body was dumped at a certain place in French's forest. Whose body? I'll tell you all about it when we get there. If this is one of those little games of yours... You want me to take this to inspect the lemon? Come on. Turn off the road on that clay patch. Yeah. Where do we go from here? Just follow me. And straight this way. If there's a body out here, Kent, how do you know about it? I'll tell you when we find it. It's just behind this book. Well? Well, it was supposed to be just here. Ah. It was supposed to be, eh? Yeah. And where is it now? Oh, I haven't got the slightest idea. Kent, your license comes up for renewal next month. Yeah. And do you know who's going to write a nasty little letter to the commissioner? Yeah. Ever done much hitchhiking, Kent? So long, Inspector. It took me almost an hour to get a lift to the city. I went to a pay phone, used the directory, got Ed Murphy's address. Lavano Road, Mossman. It was a brick cottage. There were no lights burning. On the corner was a milk bar. I went in. There was a young blonde behind the counter. There's something for you? Yeah, maybe. Do you know a fellow named Ed Murphy? Mr. Murphy? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> oh. He's an awful nice man. Tells you how beautiful you are, huh? Uh. <laughs> look, uh, look, uh, I'm a, a reporter. I'm working on a story about Ed, Ed Murphy. I know he's a man about town and a good sportsman. Oh, he's a sport, all right. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. Well, uh, the point is, he's not home, see? So I wonder if you could give me a few facts. Like, for instance? Is he married? Oh, no. Lives alone? Oh, yes. I know that because... Uh, well... Yeah. Uh, thanks. Is that all you want to know? I think so. If there's anything more, I get off at 11 o'clock. <laughs> oh, fine. Uh, I might come back for a... Uh, Milkshake. <laughs> I went to Murphy's place, walked around the back, got out my skeleton keys. Tried the knob, didn't need the keys. I went in. Reached for the light switch on the wall. What? The, the guy was just standing there, scared. The place was a shambles. He made a move, but I put my right fist in the way. <laughs> Followed with a few more. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like somebody else had the same idea. Let's see who you are, Buster. Uh -huh. Driver's license. Fred R. Cunningham. <coughs> Hello, Freddy. Uh, what were you looking for, Freddy? Uh, um, Do you know Ed Murphy? Yeah. Murphy and his friends have the darndest habit of just walking into each other's places. Well, I'm... Uh, I left a cigarette case here. Cigarette case, huh, Freddy? Is that why you pulled the rugs from the floor, the pictures from the walls? Is that why you started to pull the stuffing from the furniture? Uh, the place was like that when I got here. So you just calmly searched instead of calling the cops, huh? I was only here a minute or so before you arrived. But you didn't bother to turn on the lights. You used that flashlight I see on the floor, huh, Freddy? All right, so what are you going to do about it? Well, maybe we can make some kind of a Deal? Deal? dough, Freddy. You mean if I offer you some money... I won't call in the cops. How much money? You make the offer. Fifty pounds. <laughs> oh, that's worth a lot more than that, Freddy. 
Just for entering her house? And for doing a couple of hundred quids worth of damage. I told you it was like that when I got here. No, no, Freddy, no. You, you did that. You were looking for something specific and you didn't find it. Something worth a heck of a lot of dough. You seem to know a lot about it. I didn't, but I wanted him to think I did. He was a pretty boy, this Freddy. Curly black hair, a dimple in each cheek, big brown eyes. A cute cleft in his chin. What was I looking for, eh? Marna told me. That's a lie, Martin. What a... I figured you were working with Marna. But I was a bit puzzled when I noticed that wedding ring on your finger. Not many men wear wedding rings, and when they do, they're usually very much in love with their wives. But a guy who's palling around with a cheap frill like Marna... Shut up! That's what she is, Freddy. After she used you, she should have killed you, Kent. Well... That gives me the complete picture. Won't do you any good. I'll tell you about it anyway, Freddy. You were in Marna's apartment with Murphy. You stabbed him, panicked, and ran. You phoned Marna and told her what had happened. She saw that you were too upset. To... I wonder who's calling Murphy. Why don't you go and see? Yeah. That might be an idea, Freddy. Hello? Hello? Mm. Wrong number? Yeah. I think you were wrong right along the line, Kent. Maybe the cops won't think so. You've got nothing at all. I got plenty. To establish a murder, you're gonna have a corpse. And you got rid of the corpse after Marner and I dumped it, right? That's right. While I was unconscious after Marner slipped me the mickey. Yeah. And then you came here and started looking for the... The what? Taking a blind stab, I'd say letters or maybe a photograph or two, huh? Go on. Well, it's pretty simple, really. You're a cute boy and you're married, probably to a dame either older than you are or not very exciting. Not nearly as exciting as Marna. And so? Well, Ed Murphy has a, a reputation as a sportsman and man about town. A guy like him would have to have a lot of money. Yet he had no obvious source of income, which... Spells in any language, blackmail, Freddy. And, uh, who was he blackmailing? Marna and you. Whatever he had, it put the both of you together in a very compromising way. Well, why should I worry about that? I'm in love with Marna. Sure, but you love money, too. Your wife's money. As for Marna, she's a top model and she likes it. If a scandal involving the two of you came along, she'd be finished as a model and your wife would throw you to the wolves. Now, how's that for size? Theoretically, it's fairly good. Oh, there are a few ends that need tying, but they're not very important. Such a shame that all that sharp thinking must go to waste. It won't. Get up. Get up fast. Uh -huh. All right, I'll pull you up. Uh -huh. I heard a sound outside. I've been waiting for it. Got my arm around his throat and held on tight. The back door, which I hadn't pushed shut, now opened all the way. Marna! Marna came in the 25 and a hand, but she couldn't fire without hitting a boyfriend. However, that didn't stop her. Don't shoot, Larry. Drop it. I intended to. Freddy went limp. I let go of him. Full of surprises, aren't I, Larry? Yeah. Well, don't just stand there holding the gun on me. What gives? It was all his idea, Larry. He killed Murphy. But you played right along with him. I had to. Oh, Larry, put the gun away. Why? This is why. Mm. His kisses could never make me feel like this. That was you on the phone, wasn't it? Does it matter? Oh, does anything matter? It was a prearranged thing. You would have phoned to see if everything was okay. Yes. When I heard your voice, I knew what I had to do. We can leave him here. He killed Murphy. That should finish it. But first we have to find something, don't we? Oh, I knew you'd see it my way. Yes, Larry. We have to find the photos. Of you and our late friend here, huh? Yes. But before we start looking... Oh, Larry. <sighs> oh, we can have such a lot of fun. You're a smart girl, but you made one mistake, one bad mistake. Larry. I like you, Marna. I like you a lot. 
But with you around, I could never turn out the lights. You're too smart. I don't like any women that way. Larry, Larry, kiss me once again. No, honey. This is how I feel. <coughs> oh, why, you dirty, filthy rotten... She said a lot of other things, but I still called the cops. According to Inspector Daniels, she'll get life. The body of Murphy incidentally floated to the top of a quarry a week later. But after the cops took Marner in and asked me their quota of questions, I went to get a milkshake. I was wondering if you'd come back. <laughs> My blonde friend didn't have very much on top. <laughs> but who cares about an empty attic? Good night. Good night.